Hi guys, welcome to Buck and Jack. I am Adrian. And yesterday I got a phone call from the AD. I got the phone call. So that's where we're going. We're off to the AD to pick up my new watch. I'm not gonna lie to you, I am nervous. I've never bought a luxury watch, a new luxury watch before. So I don't know what the process is like, and it's a lot of money, so I think that's why I'm nervous. Nerves mixed with excitement. Anyway, let's go see what happens. <laughs> so shiny. Now I can't explain the nerves that I felt on this day. Uh, when I got the call, it was just pure excitement. It was uh, a sense of disbelief, but just complete excitement. Then it came to the day, the journey of going to pick the watch up. I suddenly became quite nervous about the whole situation. I can't pinpoint why I was nervous. It's, it's a lot of money, it's a big decision to make. I've been waiting a long time for this watch. Maybe I was a bit anxious around what the process was going to be but I didn't know whether I was going to get the papers I didn't know whether they were going to take stickers off I didn't know um, if it was just going to be very transactional or if it was going to be quite an enjoyable occasion um, I, I just there was so many unknowns going on here and I was just so pleasantly surprised that the funny thing is is that in the watch world this isn't even an expensive watch especially in the Booker AD they have far far more expensive watches Probably about 95% of the JLCs that they have are more expensive than this. Uh, certainly the Hublots are, are far more uh, expensive. So it's, this isn't an expensive watch, yet the occasion was fantastic. The whole journey was, was brilliant. And I, I'm, I'm kind of taken into that, that feeling of buying a new watch. It's, it, it is a nice occasion, it is exciting. And the guy who helped me, Daniel, he completely understood my nerves. And he also completely appreciated that this was a special occasion for me. He, he understood that this was something meaningful. And that, that, that was cool. That, that was a really nice thing to kind of... He just allowed me to have my moment, which sounds a bit wet. Uh, it's the most expensive watch I've bought. Um, and it's the first watch I've bought new. So it was, it, it was a cool occasion. It was a very cool occasion. And we got champagne. It's, free champagne is always good. So let me talk you through the process of, of what went on. I'm, I'm sure many, many of you have been through this process before, but I'm, I'm also sure a lot of people out there are in the same position as me and, and haven't had that process before. So the watch came in this um, little plastic transit uh, box, which is quite unluxurious, but there's something nicely clinical about it. You, you certainly get the feeling that this watch hasn't been touched between the Rolex factory and you, and there's, there's something quite nice about that. So then the watch is taken out, and you get to try it on and everything, sticks are still on. And I was I was keen to try and get rid of these nerves, and so I'd, I wanted to pay for the watch as soon as possible. The money was there, it was all, I'd, I'd got my head around the transaction itself. I wanted to enjoy the process as much as possible, so I, I actually just wanted to get the money side out of the way, because that was, I had a feeling that that's what was making me nervous, so I just thought, Okay, let's get them on it and, and do it. And then once once the transaction was out of the way, it then felt like I could just get involved and, and enjoy the watch. The nerves hadn't gone, so it wasn't about the money. It must have just been the excitement about having that watch. And maybe the decision making, I don't know. But once I paid for it, we had some champagne. He signed the warranty card and just started to really enjoy the interaction and just got excited. Both, we were both excited about the watch. Um, although, which was I kind of appreciated because I'm, I'm sure he gets to see lots of these. Daniel, the sales chap, clearly understood that this was something special for me. And and so then I, th I think we just both enjoyed the, the moment. So then he took away my ID uh, and took down my details. Uh, so the watch is now registered to me. So if the watch is stolen, I can register the watch as stolen and the serial number is linked to my details. So the watch would come back to me. Um, apparently that only works in the UK. I'm not sure how it works in the rest of the world, um, but I think it's quite cool. Up until now, I'd kind of poo-pooed the idea of having a name on the, the guarantee card. Uh, who, who cares, it doesn't really matter. It's just a guarantee card and it's probably out of date anyway if you're buying a pre-owned watch. All of what I didn't think mattered about buying a new watch, I absolutely loved now. Having my name on the card makes the watch feel even more special. Having the watch be brand new and not just new to me, that feels special. I'm not gonna do a review of the watch now. I'm not gonna compare it to my relationship with my Kermit, um, cause that, that has changed, which is, is uh, I didn't think could happen, but I'm completely taken by the idea of buying a new watch. I used to be quite against it, but now the process is fantastic. Let's get out of the box. I've, I'm wearing my Explorer. Let's get this thing off and let's get the Batman on. Um, if you're new to this channel, hit subscribe. And... So you've got this outer thing, sleeve, cream box 
Rolex Wavy Box. And then, <laughs> I'm still excited about it. <laughs> and there she is. Jesus, that is a cool watch. One of the cool things about buying this was the manager of the Bikura branch. Um, I actually first met her probably about a couple of years ago. When I was looking at buying my Kermit, the Kermit was up against this guy. I settled with going for the Kermit. The person I had spoken to about the Batman was the manager of this branch. Um, so it's quite cool that these two years later that I've actually bought the watch from her AD. Um, but this is it, the Batman. She is a stunning machine. I'm not gonna talk about the watch too much, but it feels and looks absolutely incredible. Everything I disliked about the idea of buying a new watch, I absolutely love about this thing. I used to think I liked old watches because I liked seeing the age and I feel like the, the age kind of adds to the character. It's, it's like my Explorer's all a bit battered up now and I, I feel like it's got so much more character now than what it did when it was pristine. This is absolutely pristine and I love it equally. This video is gonna be about the interaction, not about the watch. Um, I'm gonna do another video about the watch. Otherwise, there's gonna to be too much to talk about. So there's a big thing in the UK where ADs keep the papers. There's a massive, I know there's a lot of people flipping these watches, uh, Daytonas, um, Batmans, Pepsis, um, the Sea Dweller, the 50th anniversary Twitter. There's so many of these waitlisted watches being pushed around at massive premiums. ADs really want to stop that from happening. I don't know if that's a push from the AD or whether it's a push from Rolex, um, but there is a massive like push to try and stop that happening. Um, and it's quite nice to, to hear the things that they do to try and stop this from happening. They sold me the watch, um, yeah, kind of helped by the channel because they knew that I wasn't going to flip the watch. Uh, but this is most, most certainly has been bought as an investment piece. So this isn't gonna get flipped um, any time soon at all. There's something that doesn't sit right with me about an AD keeping the papers because the, it's your watch, you've bought the watch, so legally those papers are yours. If, if, the, watch is, <laughs> if the watch was easier to find, you, it'd be a fair thing to say, if you keep the papers, I'm gonna only give you a fraction of the money because the papers are worth a lot of money. So I, I think that practice is a bit um, bizarre. However, if you look at it from the other side of it, they're trying to do a good thing. They're trying to stop the gray market from having so much power. They're trying to stop these watches going onto the gray market. So although it might leave a bitter taste in your mouth that they've kept your papers, to think about why they're doing it. And it is actually within your interest. I know it's preventing you from selling that watch within the first year because they keep the papers for, for 12 months. But I don't know, I, I kind of feel, it, it, it's, it's a funny process, but ultimately they're trying to do it for the, the greater good of the watch community. I would have been annoyed had they kept the papers, but then equally I would have understood it. Um, they did take the, um, the stickers off. Uh, and that's another thing that ADs do to prevent um, resellers because it's hard to prove that this is an unworn watch if they've taken the stickers off. Personally, I am really grateful they took the stickers off because I think I would have babied this a lot more had they left the stickers on. To, to kind of sum up my interaction and this experience, and this is just talking about the West London Booker branch. I, I, I don't know if this is what other ADs do. Do let me know in the comments if, if you've had a, a negative or a good experience buying, um, buying a watch from an AD but they really understood the occasion for me. This isn't an expensive watch for that level of AD, but they completely understood the, the kind of what it meant for me to make that decision um, and to have that watch. And that whole sense of occasion was really captured and really heightened by them. Uh, and I appreciated that. So thanks to the Booker guys uh, and girls. And I'm completely won over by the idea of buying a new watch. Put it this way, I came home and I thought, could I put up with a 39mm Explorer? Should I be selling my 36mm Explorer to buy a 39mm Explorer so I can have a brand new watch again? 
Um, I quickly went against the idea because I love the 36. Maybe next week I'll do a video, kind of a bit of a review. I'm not going to do too much of a review of it because if I'm sure loads of people have done reviews of these watches. But I would like to talk about what I think of the watch um, and my relationship now with my other watches, uh, certainly my Kermit, which is also an investment piece. Guys, let me know what you think of the Batman. I would love to hear of your experiences with ADs as well, whether you felt they captured the occasion um, as much as they certainly did with me. Let me know what you think of the watch. If you're new to this stuff, hit subscribe down there. Check me out on Instagram at Bark and Jack, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.